And now back to the LunaticRadio.com show. We suck. What up, everybody? LunaticRadio.com show. Here in Rockin' Studio, Patrick from TrinshHumor.net, comedian Josh Gogan, JoshGogan.com. Talking about shit, talking about cartoons. <laughs> Just another week on the show. Talking about absolutely nothing on the radio program <laughs> exactly. today. Exactly. Emails to the show, lunaticradio.com. Drunk call hotline, 206-202-LUN. That's 206-202-5666. Still trying to figure out if Steve-O called the drunk call hotline. I think he did. Joining us on the phone, everybody, is a comedian, nationally known comedian. His name is Patrice O'Neill. He's uh, one of our favorites. If you don't know who he is, just go shoot yourself. Hey, Patrice, <laughs> how are you? Yeah, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? What the fuck is up? What's, what's going on, on, man? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah. What, what channel is this? Oh, yeah, all right. This, this, this is what they call the internet. <laughs> so I go www.swest. Lunaticradio.com. I see. Okay, cool. I'm on for the, for the time I read. So you you guys on every day? Uh, no, once a week. <laughs> once a week, Sunday night. That's yes. right. Sunday night. All right, fellas. <laughs> We're making it now. This is the Five big time, time Patrice. Yeah, Five right. Time, right, right during uh, NFL highlights. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers got it together. But, you know. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> yeah, we got this <laughs> radio <laughs> thing <laughs> figured <laughs> out. <laughs> Fucking Wednesday, uh, like around seven, where just people are searching for something to do, as opposed to Patriots, uh, you know, yeah, right. being Washington, and, and, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how we feel, Patrice. You nailed I would, it. I, I would uh, on any other day, I'd be ornery, but I'm not so mad because uh, for some reason, I, and I don't get it. I don't know if any, if any guys are sports fans over there, but yeah. I don't understand why. Because we live in New York, we have to watch awful Jets and the awful Giants, and and you can't watch anything else other than the Jets or the Giants. I want to watch Patriots a little bit, and want to watch the Colts. It's really disgusting. So you caught me right at a great time. Actually, so oh, wait, you weren't en- on, man. you weren't enjoying that that wonderful Giants Dolphins game from London. Oh, it was pathetic. The Giants and the Jets, I'm not going to lie to you, it's the, they're the two worst teams. And, and like, matter of fact, every team in New York, the, the state of New York, Buffalo, Jets, and the Giants, dude, I, I, I'm i shitting you not, it's the worst. I, I've never seen it. And the, and the Knicks. Yeah. They're the worst. It's the best city and the worst team, the most Boring, shitty teams, man. I can't believe it. But uh, so uh, we're lucky today. And then there's no Monday night uh, football. To, I mean, uh, Sunday night football right, tonight. Right. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm yours for a little while, fellas. What's going on? <laughs> What's new? Oh, I gotta say, the NFL in general, I I hate. Yeah, I think the games are just boring. All the analysis. It's just analysis. It's not even game anymore. Six hours well, of analysis. I mean, uh, that's um. I don't know even. I don't want to start insulting you guys for any reason. But who says they don't? like football other than a fucking sociopath or <laughs> well I dig the college football because you get like the uh, you know you get the uh, Florida State coming in playing some scrubby team they beat them like a hundred to nothing I like dominance Patrice that's what I'm getting at wait a minute what sports are you into uh, college football oh you're into college football I'm into college football too actually it's, it's a lot more exciting than, than pro to be honest with you because I, I, they're, they're playing for something yeah. um but you know what? To 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 stick it to, to I'm gonna change the subject, but it's gonna be the same subject. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're a sports fan or or in general, but basketball. And I'm gonna relate this to comedy. I was just thinking about it the other day. Is that comedy is like basketball, and how basketball used to be the pros, like back in the day when Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and then played. Mm-hmm. If you was a high school basketball player. You didn't look at Barkley, Bird, Magic, Jordan going at it in the playoffs and say to yourself, you know what, I'm ready to play this shit. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to come out of high school and play against these people. But at some point, the ethic went down so low in, in basketball where high school students watch professional athletes play and they look at the game and go, I can do that shit. Same thing with comedy right now is that people sit and watch comedy and some fucking asshole watches and goes, 
I can do that. But when Carlin was at his prime, Pryor was at his prime, Cosby, everybody was at their prime, no one would look at comedy and go, oh, I, I can do that, I can do that, and I'm, a, I'm just going to go up there and tell jokes. And that's, that's what's fucking up like comedy right now is a lack of goddamn ethic and effort. And it makes people just, everybody thinks they can do fucking comedy, which is why I'm quitting very soon. <laughs> this is my last radio interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's Patrick. Uh, do you think it's the club's fault or the Booker's fault that, you know, the quality of comedy has declined so much or is it oversaturated in New York City? I don't, you know, it's confusing though, Patrick. is like a, a, a club Booker doesn't have to answer to anybody except for quality control. Like it doesn't have a any any uh, advertisers to answer to. It doesn't have a, a special interest to answer to. So I don't understand why fucking dummies don't book the best shows that they can book. I don't understand how some of these these fucking people. And, and I mean, ninety nine percent of them are girls, and then and then the other one percent are fucking hacks and, and thieves. It, it, that they just go, okay, yeah, this will be a great show on a Saturday night. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my entire, all my money I saved up, I'm going to make a choice on whether to go see American Gangster or fucking Saw 4 or come to the comic strip to see somebody's goddamn girlfriend up there doing comedy instead of, you know, possibly <laughs> Colin Quinn, possibly Nick DePaul or me or Dave Attell, if, if any of us are in town doing comedy. And then I'm gonna come see some fucking. Did you see last comic standing? Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm addicted. I'm such a hater. I'm addicted to watching things I hate. Like I can't. Oh, that finale was awful. Hate. You that... know what I mean? I look for shit to hate when I watch it. And that <laughs> goddamn show. Some girl I've never fucking seen in my life that's been doing it one year made it to the end. Do you oh. know what that does for anybody that's been doing it multiple years? It, it, to watch, like, uh, the, the ignorant dummies in America watch this girl and go, this is comedy. You can make it. Fucking <laughs> two years in, and she made it all the way to the finals against some fat fucker who's been doing it 25 years. <laughs> See, America is the wonderful... Uh, it makes me sick. You know, I think we should... It makes me sick. We, we should blame Rich Voss for that because he lost to fucking that fan in the first season, and America is just <laughs> well, happy. At least, at least that show had a epic... I think in the beginning it was a good idea it did it was new you know they didn't even know what it was and then this year I'm watching it and it's like you know they got people dressed as gestures and uh, not, uh, is it gestures what the fuck I say gestures yeah gestures it's just like and it just it just makes comedy look bad for people who aren't in it like for people who aren't like just for the average square <laughs> You could control what they think is funny so easy, and that's what's frustrating. Is just like, you know, controlling what people, <laughs> you know, actually, you know, if you're selling drugs, it's like you can give them shit, but you can also give them some good shit too. You know what I'm saying? Like from time to time, but it's hard to, you know, for, for me, for instance, it's just hard to, it's hard to get on, dude. That's why I miss the tough crowd so much. That was one of the, the things I really miss. Is, uh, what, is just being able to talk okay. shit, you know? What What do you think was Tough Crowd's downfall? Was it because of Collins' politics? It was opposite of John nah, Stewart? the downfall was, um, look at man, I, you don't really know how many people, you, like on a street level, you have to know how popular even this radio show is right now. Like right now, you could take a guess at how popular it is. But in reality, on a street level, you'll never, you never really know. And I think on a street level, the show is popular. I mean, I still, people still, you know, how many years later, four? I don't even know, three or some shit? People are like, oh, a tough crowd, man, I miss it. On the street level, you know? Right. But on, the fact is, Comedy Central, they they just support this, this, this brand of humor. It's like, for some reason, they're trying to be CNN, or they're trying to compete with Fox News and shit, with this humor of... Like, first of all, it's a bunch of guys that sound like Edward G. Robinson on the network. Like, every, everybody's like a fucking, yeah, man, wise guy, white guy. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm a wise guy. You don't get what I'm saying. Nah. See what, you see what I'm saying? It's so funny and clever. It's beyond you. Nah, nah, Comedy Central. And then it's like, everybody's a, everybody's a wise guy and a clever guy. 
but not, not many people are funny guy. You know, I mean, I know, I know uh, Carlos gets a, a shitty rap for being a goddamn thief and everything, but as a funny guy goes, at least he's halfway of a dude that's funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's not always like, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm two times two equals five, but you don't understand what I'm trying to say when I say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, it, it's just a ridiculous network, dude. It's like, if I hit the lottery, oh, you don't understand. If I could hit the lottery, I would just sit on the internet for the rest of my career and not even worry about it and do what I fucking feel like doing. Just whatever I think is funny at the time, whether it sucks or not, I just go, you know what? Just shitting in a hat. I think it's funny. <laughs> and, 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 and it could suck. It could not. It just whatever I thought was funny, I'm going to give it a shot because right now, dude, it's just pathetic. Those That awful caveman show, that is just, <laughs> yeah. I hey, don't get it. Hey, Patrice. I don't get it. Hey, Patrice, have you seen the uh, the Byron Allen show? It's kind of like a it's tough t- crowd it's format. Tough crowd. It's what co- I, I'm glad you said that. It's what tough crowd. It's what Comedy Central wanted tough crowd to be. It, it's what Comedy Central. It's fucking dreadful. Tough crowd to be. It's absolutely dreadful. I actually watched this program for the first time the other night, and Byron Allen comes out. He's not even a comedian. He's like a guy that does like Hollywood. He's like, oh, coming up next, yeah. fucking <laughs> Reese Witherspoon. He's a billionaire. Byron Allen is, is this, you know, he's a zillionaire. He's not. See, some dudes, here's the thing about me, man. I don't dislike anybody who's righteously doing what they're doing. It's like... I can't be mad at anybody that's doing, even if it's horse shit. I'm mad at, like, the people because they're so easily duped. It's like, mm. you know, I, you know, I mentioned, you know, I mean, even your your your, your uh, website, Patrick, is like, you know, Lisa Lampinelli is one of the worst this and that, right? Right. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not really mad at her. You know what it's like? It's like it's... if a juggler or a mime ran for president. And he just goes, I'm running for president. They go, well, what's your platform? He goes, I juggle. <laughs> president, right? And they vote the motherfucker as president. You can't be mad at a juggler. you got to be mad at the people. Right. We're trying to counteract, like, uh, the mainstream America, What you know, how they buy into this fucking bullshit comedy. We're trying to counteract not, that and I'm tell them this sure is terrible. They fucking do. I'm not sure. I'm, this is what I'm saying about, like, going back to, like, uh, I, I'm not sure if we know what's popular or not, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not positively sure that, you know, the Sarah, Silver, Sarah Silverman program is, is more popular than, than uh, fucking uh, Two Men and a Baby. I, I don't, or not Two Men and a Baby, that other thing with Charlie. Two and a half men. Uh, <laughs> two and a half men. I, who the fuck knows? They're just telling us these things. And, like, to go back to the tough crowd thing, it's like the downfall of tough crowd. I don't know where the downfall was. I think the downfall, it's always going to be the downfall, is once you have, like, it was the downfall for uh, Web Junk for me. When I was on Web Junk, the downfall was them realizing they had a commodity. And then before, when it first started, it was just some fat asshole uh, you know, t- talking about Chinese guys kicking each other in the balls. <laughs> and then it became like they had a viable product that was very cheap to make. And then it, it what it became was, you know, every week they'd be like, hey, man, like I, I, I stopped losing my faith in it because it was one little racist thing we wanted to do. It was so hack, but it was so funny is that, um, what's her name, Connie Chung. Right. Was she? She lost her mind when her show got canceled, mm. and she just went crazy on the show. Singing, her yeah. last show, she just went nuts, singing and <laughs> running around. And, and so we commented on that, and then at the end of it, I go, "Well, Connie, good night and good luck." We can't say that. Like it's so hard to say <sighs> "luck" and and all that, but "good night and good luck" was fucking hilarious, yeah. and. And they go, they go, nah, you know, we can't. And I said, oh, this is the, this is the end. So I was just like, look, I can't, you know, we can't. This ain't gonna go nowhere. You know, they try to keep it alive, but I, I, these, it was too hard to do the show. These shows are too hard. Like they could try to do another tough crowd, but they can't because they're not gonna find like seven 
real, um, completely out of the loop assholes that really, uh, we were, one thing I will say, and I'm not a, a, a fucking guy who toots his own horn, but in terms of the whole, the whole system of Tough Crowd, it was righteous. It was four or five fucking animals, dude, mm -hmm. like who really didn't give a fuck. Mick DePaul <laughs> did not give a fuck. You know, Ross does not get like, it was some real insane motherfuckers on the show talking about shit. And, and we would have got as honest as we possibly could. That's the thing I loved about that show. It had potential to go honest. N there's nothing right now on TV that even, that has potential to go honest, except for Bill Maher. You know, I watch Bill Maher. He has a, an agenda, but that motherfucker, and he will say some fucked up shit. True, like, true. he will say some shit that'll make you go, what, what the fuck you just say? And and at least he's trying his best to to be to take take it to an honest place. But right now, dude, I don't know where to go to get a nice feel of honesty, man. And, and, you know, I don't know where to go. I don't even know. You know, they got those shitty those shitty uh, websites. You know, www dot the world is coming to an end, but you don't know it dot org and shit. I don't even know where to go to find those. You know what I mean? Hey, Patrice, was uh, Tough Crowd pretty much off the cuff, or did you guys know what? you know, the subject matter was going to be covered during the show, before the show? It tried to be. Like, they they would give us, like, the the, the Act 4, mm. we would read our little thing that was prepared, but they would they would ask us what our thoughts was, just to make sure we wasn't going to say <laughs> something with rape or AIDS in it. And yeah, right. We would just say something with rape or AIDS in it. So it was just like, <laughs> it, it was really, it wasn't really prepared. It, it, they tried to make it, but... You know, that was the charm or lack of charm, whatever you want to call it, of the show. And, um, you know, but that, I miss that show, actually, man. I do. That was one of those things I, I thought could have been big, but just didn't make it. But Steve uh, Col Steve Colbert and Daily, that shit is huge. I, 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 that's what they tell me. <laughs> they tell me it's big. I've never seen the Colbert Report ever. But they, they tell me it's, a, it's successful. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Patrice. Uh, I've, I've noticed with comedy in general, when it comes to movies, comedy albums that are out on the shelves, for them, pretty much everything that's labeled as comedy now is just mediocre at best. There's one or two things that are good that rise to the top, but for the most part, it just seems like it's all for uh, it's all for what's least offensive. And what I'm wondering is is for you when you go out to the clubs, do you see that affecting the audience? Like they're expecting that mediocrity. And so when you come up with your original... No, nah, not really, dude. I used to... Not for me, anyway. I think, you know, I established, like, for, for for the most part, people know when they come out to see me, they've seen me before, and they come out, and and that's, they expect... <clears throat> one is that I'm going to say something I didn't say last time they saw me, and two, I'm going to try to be as honest as possible. And um, there might be a person or two that see the difference. I guess the difference between like say doing a radio show or doing TV is that when you're doing comedy, and this is why I love Colin so much. You know, is that you know that fucker says he hates he he doesn't believe in God. Not that he hates God, but he doesn't believe in God, <laughs> and he has an hour and a half to expand on his uh, his thought process. And like sometimes, man, you know the soundbite thing is like you don't get a chance to say like, look. All right, let's let's take this for instance. You know the whole Michael Vick thing and the animals and the animal versus people. Not only the animal versus people, but the racial thing. But let's take let's take the animal versus humans thing. Now I'm a I'm a dude. I'm just one of those dudes that happen to have been born uh, cursed with more compassion for animals than I do people. So when that lady was on CNN and the guy made a mistake um, and actually sounded like he compared raping of a woman as being worse than um or raping of a woman is less important than the dog fighting and the lady went bananas right. and and i was like sitting there going well i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and he backed up like he was like no 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 oh my god like, he started panicking but i'm sitting there going wow 
how do I get that out? See, this is the thing about wh why I wish I had to study more in school so I could be able to communicate better. A lot of times I go on and on just because I don't have the words to explain, so I'm trying to search for the words to explain exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, look, if I was watching a woman getting raped at the same time somebody was choking a kitten, I... It, it would it'd be a tough choice on who the fuck. <laughs> it's because we love pets. Like, <laughs> right? I look at one of those karate kicks that could stop a rape and stop a kitten choking at the same time. <laughs> double, you know, but, but to be honest, if I'm watching some chick that I don't know get raped and I'm watching some kitten get choked to death by some motherfucker at the same time, Immediately, I do not say, well, rape is much more important. I must stop this rape. I don't know. <laughs> you know? It, it, it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying. See, the thing is, fellas, is like, the hard thing is, okay, it's how to communicate uh, good is good if it's good for me. It's how to communicate your selfishness in terms of what affects you. And and if you feel how you feel, that's the thing. It's not the PC police. It's more like, I, well, how, who am I to tell you how to feel? If you feel how you fucking feel, that's valid. You know what I'm saying? So if you think something is sucks, then you think it sucks. If you think talking about Chinese people is funny, then you think it's funny. I don't. I I can't understand how people are getting into the into these things of. How the fuck I feel? I can't explain it. You know, uh, 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 you know, do 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 fucking Utah miners dying in a collapse affect me? Mm. I'm sorry. Right, right. Yeah, it you, doesn't. You can't apologize for what makes you laugh. Right. Or, it, or make you cry. Right. <laughs> right. 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 You know what? Or, or make you do or make you indifferent. Like, how the fuck can you control that? That's the whole thing with this, all the Imus shit and all the, you, you know, the, 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 the fucking, all this, this crazy shit. It, what affects you affects you. And, you know, don't call me an asshole because something might not affect me like it affects everybody else, man. I don't know what to say about that. I can, I can be fake and pretend I give a fuck. But to be honest, you know. You know, that's why I don't take a job with, like, Nickelodeon, because I know myself too well, like Nickelodeon or Disney. If they ever offer me anything by chance, which they probably won't, but <laughs> I, it's like, it, I would say no, because I have, I have in me certain mistakes. And one of those mistakes is, you know, if I'm doing something where I'm famous to children, like, I, my girl got a, my, my girl got a kid, and Disney is huge. Like, I didn't realize this whole Disney thing is just, this is, it's bigger than life. You know what I mean? It's the mm -hmm. biggest thing that we never heard of. Because we're adults and we're fucking, you know, Patrick works where he works. And I think how I think. And, <laughs> you know, you guys do what you do. But there's a Disney world of a bunch of kids who are just famous. 14-year-old, like Raven Simone is worth billions of some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's fine. And, and it's a pla it's, it is a viable place to go if you got ideas and stuff, but I'm like, ah, I'm not fucking with Disney because I'm the guy who could go to Brazil and sing a pop or hook or I'm the guy that could, you know, try to fuck my girl in the movie theater or even jerk off <laughs> in the movie theater. I'm that guy that what? could do that. If you can come with some good songs. Yet, but it's there. <laughs> yeah. P uh, Patrice, one of the things I really like about you is, is your honesty when it comes to... Um, to your attitude uh, when it comes towards women, and I saw I saw a study that I wanted to I wanted to run by you to see what you thought about. Uh, basically, what it said was that when it comes to abuse, domestic violence, at least half of it is initiated by the woman. She's the one that hits the man first before he goes off and beats the shit out of her. Well, that's why it's like here's the thing: we, we must. You know, I was looking at, uh, I don't think I was watching Bill Maher, and he, had, he was, they was talking about women in burkers over in, uh, over there. You mm -hmm. know, wherever the fuck they wear burkers. And, and the thing is, women in this country, they don't give us enough credit for repressing our madness. The restraint. Like for, for them to be women and talk shit and initiate anything, I have to restrain my madness. If my girl hits me, I can't hit her back. She doesn't under, like she doesn't respect that. Like like uh, like even female cops. It's like if some little five foot two inch Mexican lady cop 
tells me get against the wall. She's only a cop if I let her be one. Like, right. <laughs> she can't arrest me without my co without I decide that she's a cop. Now there's some police out there who can fucking arrest me. Whether he's a cop or not, he can make a citizen's arrest. I don't think anybody should be a cop that can't make a citizen's arrest. That can't go, you're under arrest, and I can physically stop you and and and, and from committing a crime. But if, when you have to comply, and this is the thing that women just don't fucking respect, is that men have to uh, rep- like uh, 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 we have to actually step back and not do no caveman shit like we're repressing everything in us we're rep- even when we're being faithful we're, we're repressing ourselves we're repressing our honesty that's why you got guys out here saying the word inappropriate there's a, any guy who has that in his repertoire of words should be like ostracized <laughs> and and put out there as a token to say look ladies this is what you've made us a bunch of fucking phonies who would say the word inappropriate? Because women, and I, and I say this on stage, it's like women should think of words like inappropriate. You know why? Because they sit down to pee. Anytime. <laughs> you ever like think you had to take a shit, but you just had to piss, and, oh, yeah. and you're just sitting there with your dick between your legs, yeah. peeing, <laughs> and you're sitting, yeah. and, and you're not shitting, but you're just looking around the ceiling, and you're sitting in this position, and you just go, God, this is inappropriate. <laughs> this is you know, wrong. I feel like a bitch. You know what I mean? And, and that's the only time a guy should say some shit like that when he's doing some shit like a bitch. Other than that, it's like just women should just respect the fact that we are let, letting them. And this is so, this is the thing, like, this is a sound bite, but, I, you know, I, I can't explain it any different. It's like we're, we're repressing our, our place so that they can feel this 50-50 equal shit, but that shit don't exist. Women ain't equal. What the fuck you want? And I'm not talking about socially equal. Yeah, everybody, I, all you have to do is pay women the same money and they're equal. But I'm talking about arm wrestling, nigga, you know what I mean? Opening pickle jars. I'm talking about running. I'm talking about thinking. You know what I'm saying? We, we outthink them. You know, you ever meet a bitch that can play chess? No. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's honest, man. It, it wears you down because all day long they want this, this, this we should know. I mean, look, man, I'm not saying go out there and tie them up and, and jump out of bushes and do shit, but I'm saying respect the fact that, look, man, half the bitches I ever go with, I'm smarter than. Even I've gone out with lawyers and doctors and I'm smarter than them because they're just girls. They think, they think with their fucking hearts and shit. They don't, they're not practical. They dopey, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, just give him up for the respect for for what he's doing. And like I told my girl, I'm like, look, you, I let you have jealousy. Like when you're <laughs> jealous, it's I let you be jealous. You're, I'm not your possession. I can tell you, look, bitch, uh, I'm dating another woman. You like it or leave it. Right. Like the fact that I'll go, I respect her. And the fact that I'll go, okay, I'm not gonna. I'll answer the phone when she calls, or the fact that, you know, if she says, well, who was that girl? I go, well, she was this, or she was, I was talking to her about, what all of that stuff we do, like, oh, 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 honey, <laughs> that shit is because we let it, we let them have it. Her jealousy is mine, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that, it, it, it's, it's like her competitiveness against other. that's mine, that's something I give her. I don't have to give her jealousy. I give it to her because I desire to give it to her, but other than that, if if I don't desire to give her something, she's not going to have it. Mm. You understand? Mm. And that's the same thing with socially, man. Like, women are fighting so hard to get motherfuckers in trouble at work and this and that. But the fact is, if I own a job, she, they don't understand people. And the same thing with black people, man. Black people, it's like, it's like, I'm not saying that we're at the mercy of white people, but I'm saying, look, the fact is that racial harmony is a two-way street. Now, if I'm always going to attack a white guy for everything, if I don't give a white guy a pass, what's going to happen is going to be an undercurrent of resentment. And that's happening for women right now, too, where right now there's an undercurrent of resentment towards peace, you know, towards the fact is that men are are having a peaceful, like a, what do they call it, like a pact. We do have a peaceful pact with women, but they're becoming abusive. 
and 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 they be and, and frivolous lawsuits, frivolous sexual harassment, and 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 when they cut you off in, in, in the street drive, and they look at you like they're gonna get out the car and whoop your ass. Uh. Yeah, I, and you go, you funky bitch. You know, I'll, I'll fucking choke the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand my, my 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 wife and I get in arguments at times, and she's actually, I mean, she'll she'll hit me, and it's I'm not even thinking. It's a it's a snap reaction where I will push like push her hard, but I'll push her away, and she gets she gets. Um, I, I, she, all of a sudden, she's like, I, I can't believe you did that. Right. Like, look, oh, you're course. lucky. But you're lucky my fist she's wasn't balled. not fucking taking into account that you will knock her through a wall. She's not taking into account of all the restraint that you have because you love her. And the thing is, man love is a is it's it's something we don't even understand what it is because we're not searching for love. We love is the end for us. Love is the final thing. We're not looking for that. You got to understand that when she, once you say to yourself, this is the last woman I'm ever going to be with, that is like, you know, that's like when, you know what that is? I'll tell you what that is. That's like when in Superman 2, when that motherfucker <laughs> had a choice between losing his powers or be with that ugly Lois Lane. And, <laughs> and, and remember that? And, and, no, and everybody goes, did you just lose your fucking superpowers for this monster <laughs> and and you know and then he gets his ass beat at the diner that is a guy who God. decides to be faithful for the rest of his life damn it he that's gave brilliant. away his superpowers man uh. and a bitch don't appreciate it now now the bitch don't like you no more now she goes you're, you're not you're nothing i married you because you were superman but bitch the only way I could be with you is to not be Superman. Right. Now you realize you made a mistake. Now you walking through uh, the snow. <laughs> now you walking through. You walking through uh, uh, Antarctica, <laughs> trying, to, trying to find them, your green crystal, man. <laughs> you trying to look for the fortunes of solitude because you realize you a fucking idiot because you gave some bitch all your powers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we do. We give a bitch all our powers, and they get beat up in the diner by some motherfuckers. Are you? Are you? Are you going to be putting this in a book? Please tell me you are. <laughs> yeah, when, when's the book coming out, Patrice? <laughs> yeah, really. Ah, man, I wish I could. I try to write something, but you know, you go through phases in life. Like right now, you know, I'm at a phase where, you know, I'm with one bitch, and I'm trying to deal with. I mean, pimping is easy, dude. Pimping is easy. Being in love is hard. Just, but I mean, having ten bitches that don't know each other, that you don't give a fuck about, is way easier because you can't get busted doing anything. You can't get... There's no loss that you're not willing to take. You just be like, bye, bitch, leave. I got nine others, and then I'm going to have ten because I'm going to find another bitch, you know, tomorrow. So if you have a lot of women that you don't give a fuck about, that's easy to do. But one bitch that you care about is that's just hard. That's hard to juggle. It's hard to juggle one chick. Like if you take a basketball and you have five, four basketballs, you can juggle four basketballs real easy. But if you take one and just like try to hold it on your finger, that shit is difficult, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like right now I got one bitch that I'm trying to, you know, make her understand what I go through. Uh, like, like some women out there, they be with a guy and they're like, oh, well, uh, it, it, you know, ask any woman, like, if they been with a guy and they go, man, he, it seems like he's on his period. Like, guys have periods, <laughs> like a woman does. And, and what a man's period is, is when we're staying faithful to a bitch for a long period of time. Yeah, exactly. We get the same symptoms. We get fucking cramps. We fucking miserable, irritable. Because you're looking at some chick. And your and your natural instinct is not to be with some girl for the rest of your fucking life. Right, right, <laughs> it's right. It's not our instinct, dude. That's not what we are. No, That's not our intentions. And we have no <laughs> guilt. Only motherfuckers that that go, I want to find the woman of my dreams. Are motherfuckers that can't get pussy. And if you can't get pussy, then you go, I want to find that one woman for the rest of my life. <laughs> if you get pussy, you don't want no bitch nowhere for more than five or ten minutes. You understand? And, and that's not our nature, man. Our nature is not to go, I love you. I want to be with you forever. That's just, any guy that goes, I love her. Dude, he's just obsessive and possessive, man. You know? <laughs> and, 
You know what I mean? He's not in love. He just pose- he has a possession that he wants to control. You know what I Sounds mean? Sounds like me. <laughs> he just described the last year of my life. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. So, Patrice, you'd rather have a stable of women? Is that what you're saying? What kind I'm of saying that it's, it's your nature to be able to... It's easier right. to to be like... Uh, what's the word? Poly... poly Polyamorous. 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 It's, it's a man's instinct. It, see, it, it's a woman... Like, if you watch any male creature in, on, 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 on a Discovery Channel, it's not one that stays... Right. It, they fuck. They they do they do what we do to get the pussy. Like they they fight some <laughs> other ram. They they just, they fucking do the you know they do some type of weird male dance. They compete. Whatever the 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 nature's uh, whatever nature's uh, uh, re- references or relevance or uh, uh, to like dating. Whatever nature's way of dating is and that and that co- competition and that wooing and that courtship thing. Um, we do the same thing, but what the difference is, and I think is it's God's way of being unfair to women, is that you know at least like the female turtle, if she as she has a turtle, she just goes to the beach and just you know plops some turtles out there and then she bounces. <laughs> but I think women, there's so much more at stake when it comes to you know love. It's like they can't. They, you know, once they're pregnant and once they have a family, dude, that's the end of their life. For yeah. real, for real. And, and, and the thing is, God made it such that, you know, and we have social structure, and that's what makes us get involved in that, where it's like you see some guy walking around the mall with the front chest plate with the kid on it, you know, with the, <laughs> it, it, you know, where it, that's just so, it's so miserable. Like, I hate to see miserable guys and un ungrateful women i hate to see I, I i watch that like when i go out to eat with my girl i just look at couples and i look at some guy that's gonna be paying for the food and the girl is just sitting there miserable and fucking <laughs> causing the problems and i just want to get up and go you fine i just saw my girl i said look man look at this funky bitch getting this nigga's gonna buy this bitch pancakes and eggs and she's sitting there like this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Or, or when you ask your chick, hey, listen, can we do a threesome? Or can you know, can we bring a girl in just so I can get? And she goes, no, with this, with this no attitude of you know this is not gonna happen. And and with no option in her head that you will leave her. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring you any happiness. And. You're not gonna leave me. How dare a bitch? Though, cause she don't understand that me being faithful, I am going against everything I believe in, and so you can't go against something you believe in, so I can be happy. You can't bring another bitch in, let me fuck her. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stay with you. You know what I mean? I ain't going nowhere. Right. You know what I mean? I'm gonna stay. It's just like you can't, like you can't help me out. You can't go against. You, the norm you can't work with me I'm working with you I'm fucking coming to, to you know I'm giving you every dime I got I'm fucking you know I'm, I'm tickling you coochie coo and you can't just like let another chick blow me cause you 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 you, you, not, you don't first of all you wanna be happy but you don't wanna cause my happiness are you out of your fucking mind but innately they know that because they don't have a skill that's why they lock us down as quickly as possible because they know they essentially they don't have the skill level to get what they want. We have the skill level to get what we want, but they force us to be how they want. They make you love them. You love me, love me. Do you love me? I love you, you love me? But, but you've never gotten pussy by saying, pussy, give me pussy, pussy. <laughs> you know, a chick, you be with a chick for years and years and years, and she goes, it's time for us to either shit or get off the pot. Really? If I go out with you two weeks and, and you don't give me no pussy, can I say something like that to you? Can I say, hey, sh- <laughs> fucking shit or get off the pot? Take yeah, right. my dick or bounce? <laughs> We, we try to figure out charming ways to get what we want, and they don't. They don't. That's why we don't like them. That's why they're assholes. Because they don't have to. They don't. They're not charming. They have no charisma. Because they don't need to. 
They just walk around and they just look straight ahead and make decisions on what guy they're going to make miserable. And, <laughs> and they don't understand that once they make us miserable, we're getting out of there. And they don't, they don't know how to stop that from happening. It's, that's what their resentment is towards men. They don't know how to stop. They don't know. They, they blame us, but what it is, they should blame themselves because they don't have the ability to get men to do what they want to do, except for with the pussy. But that all ends when they turn 40, 45, you know what I mean? It's over. Pussy magic is over then. Pussy magic. Pussy magic. (laughs) We don't want any part of the pussy at 45. No, dude. I guess a forty-five-year-old woman, if she wanted to have a sugar daddy, he would have to be (laughs) eighty. But like a twenty-year-old, like a forty-five-year-old chick walking around, like okay, a twenty-one-year-old, right, with little little panties on, little bra. She got a C cup. She got fat little booty, and she just walk around you. She could play pussy games in a panty and bra. Like she could just walk around, skip around, and. And, and and giggle and 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 you let her do that just because she looks good. She's twenty. She's brand new. Yeah. <laughs> some chick thirty five, forty playing the same game. She out. You watch it, bitch. You out your mind. Because the value. Let me tell you, the value of pussy is like cars. It ain't like houses. You know what I mean? It goes down, it goes down in value. And, and, and for you to keep an old car, it has to be some investment in it. You have to have invested something like, you know, the car still has to have a, like when they go, you know how they go, oh, man, they don't build houses like that anymore. That's how bitches got to start being when they turn 35, 40. They got to they gotta be a, a brick house, you know what I mean? Like a, something they haven't, they don't make like that no more. You can't be an old bitch and act like these new bitches. You got to be an old bitch and go, well, here's what I have to offer that these new bitches ain't got to offer. She got to be standing tall like one of them old castles in Transylvania, you know what I'm saying? Like like, like 500 years, she got to be standing tall, got to have the, 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 the craftsmanship. She got to have craftsmanship. She can't be out here trying to be what these young dummies are being. She can't be no old dummy. You want wisdom. That's what they look for, an older, a older gentleman. If an older gentleman comes out talk, talking about, hey, can I get some pussy? Yeah. Hey. They'll be like, ugh. This, this guy is a fucking wreck. You got to be smooth, debonair. You got to smoke a, a cigarette with a long filter, nigga, and have a top hat. Yeah. And you got to be distinguished. You don't hear no word for distinguished uh, a woman. You hear distinguished gentleman. But what, what's, the, what's the counterpart for distinguished female? Nothing. There's no distinguished, she's a, she, there is none, because they don't get distinguished, they get old, and they better learn how to get distinguished. That distinguished is not a term that just should be used for men. Women should get distinguished also. Learn how to be smooth, learn how to be wanted past your beauty, but they are in deep shit. I gotta say, the women in the chat room are really agreeing with with Patrice too much. Uh, they can go fuck themselves. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, cunt. That's not nice. Come on! This is the male version Fucking of the view. No way. Patrice is a genius. I love Connie and Tisha. Hey, Patrice, uh, we're running out of time, man, but I... You know, it was great to just have you on and let you just ramble about certain subjects. <laughs> it's amazing. It's fucking unbelievable. Fucking genius. And I mean, they should tell... It. Look, man, I, all the women who are angry, it's like, look, man, I'm telling you how we feel, you understand? Mm. Now, it's like you could get mad at the medicine. Now, I give you medicine with all kind of great Kool-Aid in it, but, <laughs> you know, it'll taste better, but it's more effective if it goes straight down and it's nasty because mm. that makes you get emotional about it. You know, it, for all you women that are on the chat rooms with no boyfriend, you shouldn't be sitting there typing a the motherfucking thing. You should be going, yes, master, what should I do <laughs> to make you happy? Patrice. If you don't know how to make, if you're miserable, you know how the fuck oh you going God. you don't know how to not be miserable. You've been miserable this long, and you think what I'm telling you is gonna make you more miserable? It's gonna make you happier if you if you want to learn the animal. For this last thing about animals, man, like women, to learn how to understand the animal that men are. If you are in the Pacific Ocean and you see a bunch of sharks swimming around, you're not gonna jump in and tell those sharks, "Excuse me, you better not bite me." You better respect. <laughs> 
what they are. You're going to respect that these sharks will tear you apart, and you're going to respect what these sharks are. And you learn about sharks. You watch TV, and you know sharks will attack you. You don't wear a fucking meatloaf hat, and you don't rub yourself in blood when you get in the water if you go get in the water with some sharks. You do things accordingly. And, and, and if you want a man that's going to make you happy, uh, you better learn what animal you're dealing with. As opposed because you don't know. How the fuck you know about men? You don't. I know about women because I took the time, but you don't know about men. That's why you miserable. Man. Uh, hey, Patrice, we're running out of time. We've got about a minute left, so I want to get some plugs in before we go. Um, yeah, uh, PatriceOneal.com, uh, my podcast, I have fun doing that, and um, I'm going to be at the Stress Factory uh, November. Was it the first through the third? Yeah. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And, uh, you know, come on down and we can finish having this conversation if you want. Yeah, look forward to uh, the Black Phillip show coming back to XM202. Oh, uh, December 8th is a tentative date. December 8th, um, the next Black Phillip show. So I, I got my fingers crossed. But that looks like it's gonna be that's going to be the day. Damn. All right, Patrice. Yeah, take, take care. Please yourself. come back, man. Soon. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks a lot, Phyllis. All right, buddy. All right. That was Patrice O'Neill. Take a break. Come back right after this.